Another big name in English football has once again failed. It is Wayne Rooney who just got sacked by Birmingham City. Birmingham, a city that should be doing so much better, especially if you consider that after London, it is the second biggest city in England in terms of like the population. And that is definitely a huge talent pool where a team like this should be capable of competing on the Premier League level. Surely some big investor is going to come in and realize the potential that Birmingham City has. Founded in 1875, a big club with big tradition, but currently as we speak, things are obviously not looking too great. So they are in the 20th position. Well, that's not good. After 26 games on 28 points, just sacked Wayne Rooney, only six points off of relegation, there needs to be some change, and that change will be delivered by me. Birmingham City, I am coming in to save you right now. Mr. Rebuild is here, don't you worry. So before we actually go ahead and take a look into this squad, let's realize who has been doing well this season. Top scorer, Jay Stansfield, and top assister is Juninho Bacuña. Those seem to be some of the top players that we are looking at as we speak, alongside the likes of Siriki Dembele and Sunjic doing all right as well. But that is just stats-based. I am not someone that is following Birmingham, so if you guys have any information on them, let me know in the comments down below who has been the most outstanding player player so far this season who has the most potential to go further than the club is in the state that the club is in right now and why is the second largest city not doing as well in football as the likes of Manchester and Liverpool I would love to know so if you guys want to give me a history lesson do so in the comments down below that'd be much appreciated so hopefully I can learn a lot as well but I want to tell you guys one thing as we take in the concept or the idea of going ahead and playing with Birmingham I want to let you know that I want to lay a heavy focus on bringing in English players because as I said it's the second largest city in England surely there has to be a big talent pool that would like to be involved with the city of Birmingham so we're gonna do that largely English players at least half of the team is gonna be English but you see that Stansfield is up top right here the man who has seven goals so far this season he's only 20 years old that picture, he looks like a lot older, but that's really good. So hopefully we can have someone like him actually lead the line. Finesse shot play style on him as well. Siriki, how old are you? 26. Okay, then we're looking at others that were doing well. Jordan James apparently has five goals this season. Where is this lad? I cannot find him. Jordan, why are you hiding? Oh, it's a center midfielder. It's an 18-year-old. Okay, I am impressed. I love that. So he is uh, supposedly doing quite well. I know Miyoshi from his time in different leagues due to so rare reasons. He used to be a really good player. Then you have the likes of Sunjic who is sat on the bench right here. Anyone else that I remember? I remember Bakunya. I think he used to be at Aston Villa. Was a player that I always loved to use. So that's kind of cool to see. Apart from that... Buchanan, I think this is not the one that Inter is about to sign. It's Tejon Buchanan that they're interested in. Ivo at centre-back, 22 years old. Sanderson in here, 23. This guy used to be a quite useful talent before as well. Drame, 21. So it looks like we have a bunch of youngsters that I uh, could definitely take to that next level. Isn't Bielik one of those players that used to be at Arsenal? I don't know why, but he comes across like one that used to be at Arsenal at some point. But I am not necessarily negatively impressed by this team. It is a positive impression that I'm getting here. So we can definitely work with this squad. What is the budget? We get 6 million to start things off with. So let's go ahead and identify which formation I want to play with. Maybe we want to change things up right here and see which players fit in and which ones don't. All right, so I'm just realizing that a couple of players are only loaned in, and that means we need to find solutions for those positions for the future. Now, Ethan Laird... As far as I know, used to be quite a decent talent at Manchester United, if I'm not mistaken. So we do have someone that can take over his position instantly. So that's a good one. Burke, I never really was too hyped on this guy. There was one moment in his career earlier on where I was like, oh, this guy is huge. He's quick. He could turn out to be something, but sadly haven't really seen much of him. So he's definitely not someone I want to have in the starting 11 for now. I do realize, though, that there is one kid named George Hall, who is the one with the highest potential in this team. He actually has 82 potential. So I like that. But then others, like Ivo, for example, who are part of the starting 11, again, are only loaned in. So I will probably focus in on those positions and possibly look at goalkeeper. Let me just double check. 
John Ruddy is here. The man's 36. Etheridge is 33. And then we have Jay coming in. I'm not going to say his full name because, I don't know, YouTube might do something weird. But this man is another one that we cannot rely on for the future for now. So definitely a goalkeeper and other positions where loanies are going to be leaving. Oh, no. I just realized that the main striker is actually loaned in as well. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that one. Maybe I might buy him because the kid is doing so well in real life. I mean, technically so well. He's the best striker in the team as we speak. So I probably should save him for this club. Fulham, I want to buy J Jay Stansfield for sure. So that only costs us 1.8 million. Fulham, thank you very much for the transfer of Jay Stansfield, who now is the first official one to come in. Yes. All right, so I found the formation I want to play in. It includes two center attacking midfielders to get the best out of the players we have right now. With Hall right here, 19 years old. Roberts is 24. Dembele is going to play on the left. Miyoshi on the right. Acuna is going to be turned into a center midfielder, which I believe is going to be better for him. I think he goes up in rating that way. Laird right back. Buchanan left back. The guy is a youngster as well. Long will be replaced. He's 32 years old and we barely have any center backs in the team left because I've gone ahead and sold a bunch of players. Can Bielik? Oh, Bielik could play center back. I don't mind that. How old is he? He's 25. We could do that. We could definitely do that. So I'm going to think about that for a second. But clearly we do need a new goalkeeper and some other positions could be upgraded as well because we do want to move up into the Premier League and then having a bunch of like 60 something rated players probably isn't ideal but let me just quickly show you who i have sold to give us a little bit more funds our funds have gone up to 8 million uh stansfield we obviously brought in hogan has left ruddy has left roberts gardner yudkevitz uh etheridge has gone and chang is out on loan somewhat talented player right there so all deals done and uh now wants to come in so the first massive purchase is going to be a player that already plays in the championship Sunderland I'm sorry but I'm stealing your goalkeeper it is a youngster yes Anthony Patterson is going to be joining us right now a playing goalkeeper of Sunderland as we speak who are currently sixth in the league so uh, maybe we're making them a little bit weaker but yeah we're replacing a 58 rated goalkeeper with a 72 rated one who has a lot of potential in him six foot two tall from England and I believe Sunderland also brought out Aaron Ramsdale, if I'm not mistaken. So, hey, maybe he can step into his footsteps. But then again, his footsteps are on the bench right now. <laughs> Since we already have Laird, who is a former Manchester United player, if I'm not mistaken, we're going for another one. This one currently plays for Luton Town. It is Mengi. Yes, Teden Mengi. This guy comes in for Bielik plus 2 million. Yes, I had to pay a lot of money for this one. Maybe a little bit too much for my liking, but he comes in as a centre-back for this team. The reason why I've gone for him instead of Bielik right there is that in real life, it seems like Bielik is barely getting play time. So uh, I've gone in and got Mengi into this squad right now. High defensive work rate, six foot tall, English. Patterson, obviously English as well. So we are increasing the number of English players in this team as we speak. And I am now looking at... Hall, but for some reason, I remember I did a rebuild at some point and Hall was insane. He was so much fun to use. So rather than replacing him, I'm more looking at Roberts. I believe Roberts used to play at Leeds United. So uh, yeah, I am open for a new center attack attacking midfielder in that spot, but I do not have any more money. So we're done with transfers this season. First season is done and we finished 11th. I mean, if you consider where Birmingham is, is sat in the league table at the moment, which is like down there somewhere, that is not too bad. I'm okay with that. 61 points on our team and just a couple more wins could have pushed us easily way higher. Leicester City and Preston are going up. Southampton, Leeds, Norwich and West Brom are going to play in the playoffs to get themselves into the Premier League once more. Now, I personally am looking at a team with Chef oh sorry, Stansfield on a 71, Hall on a 70, Robert 71, Dembele hasn't grown at all. Same for Miyoshi. So I already know which positions to replace next season. Miyoshi and Dembele can go. Buchanan, lots of growth. Mengi, Sanderson, Laird, and also our new goalkeeper Patterson, all looking solid to me. But if we do get a good budget, I'm very much open to making some good changes for this team to increase even more growth 
in the next season. Now, the main man is Stansfield with 14 and 7. Robert's coming in with 13 and 2 for himself. Acuna as a center mid, 9 and 7. Love that. Hopefully, he still does a little bit of defending. I know this formation is very offensive. Dembele with 7 and 2, and even the backups are doing all right. Miyoshi has himself the most assists in the team, but only plus one. That is not going to be enough for these players to survive in this squad. So we're going to make some changes that hopefully take us towards that next level, which is obviously Premier League football. So let's get into season two right now. Right now. I'm so pleased to see that there's a player I have no idea of who has been starting games or at least playing a couple of games this season for Crystal Palace. This guy seems to have a face scan as well, which is huge. I'm actually getting madly excited about this. His name is Jesurun Raksaki. Who? I don't know where he's originally from, but that doesn't sound very English to me. But the man is actually from England. That is his nationality. Absolutely love the name. So we're going to bring him into the squad right now. Miyoshi, I am sorry. Goodbye. Raksaki is now here. 85 pace, 77 dribbling, left footed, can cut inside for us there. Technical and flair. Okay. If you guys have any info on this guy, let me know in the comments. I normally know most of the players I'm signing, but this one is a new one to me, and I'm really excited about that. So give me any info you have in the comments down below. We are going for the next one who also has an exciting name. This man is named Bali. Yes, a country I want to go to. At least my wife definitely wants to go there. Bali Mumba is joining us instead of Siriki Dembele for that left midfield position. Uh, I did overpay a little bit, but he comes in with a 73 rating. Seems like someone who can defend as well, which is beneficial in a formation like this, where Bakunya is just left by himself in the middle. So hopefully Mumba can tuck in and help out a little bit uh, for the likes of Buchanan to be relieved of that defensive pressure. But 85 pace, 74 dribbling, 5-star weak for technical flair, quick step, love it. What does Raksaki have technical and flair? Okay. So we are bringing in wingers who can get past people and also one that can at least defend the other lads. Not so much into defending. 26 actually, which is horrible. Uh, so yeah, you'll have to do all the defending. Raksaki is just going to go ahead and have fun in the attack, I guess. Guess who just beat two Premier League sides? Everton in the semi-finals of the promotion playoffs kicked out and then loot in town 3-0 Birmingham City up into the Premier League let's go that is what we love to see but the regular season wasn't that great we came in in sixth position 82 points actually there's a big gap between us and West Brom so that's not too bad but at the top you have Crystal Palace and Leeds United going back up into the Premier League alongside Birmingham City who actually finished in the lowest position to qualify for the playoffs so unlucky for a couple of former Premier League teams but this team with Stansfield up top with Hall behind him with Robert stuck on a 72, goodbye, next season you're gone. Mumbai's gone up to a 77, Raksaki up to a 78, Acuna up to a 77. He's back into the Premier League now and could be facing his former side Aston Villa. Laird up to a 79 alongside Mengi as well. Both former Manchester United players now up against United soon. Sanderson stuck on a 75 right there. Definitely a position where we're going to be improving. Buchanan keeps going up though. 78 rated. Love that. Patterson, 83. Massive. Absolutely massive growth there. And as we go into the Premier League, you know, we're going to get some good money. And that's going to be helpful because Stansfield is doing incredible. We don't need to spend money in that position. 26 and 2. Raksaki, first season, 19 and 6. Roberts, 13 and 7. Good performances. Not good in growth. Acuna, 12 and 7. Plus 3 in growth. I love that. And then we have others like Mumba and also Hall, 11 assists. Let's go, buddy. That is his best season so far. Guys, Premier League football is coming. The question is, which players are going to be joining us? From the moment I started this rebuild and thought of bringing in mostly English players, it was clear to me that Cole Palmer had to be one of those players. He starts off with a 71 rating in FC24 still. They haven't upgraded his rating enough. The guy is incredible. Honestly, he's doing such a great job. And the Chelsea side that still haven't found themselves yet, in my opinion, there's still lots to work on with that Chelsea side, but 
Old Palmer, man. That is one for the future. And he's going to be playing in the cam position for me, which is fine for him. He's left-footed. He has played a little bit central, I believe, for Chelsea as well, in a more like a nearly like a striker type position. So I am open to bring him in, in to bring in, bringing him into the squad. There we go. 78 pace. That's not ideal for the wing. So the cam position seems perfect for him. His shooting definitely should be going up. 69 is a joke. The guy seems to be scoring goals for fun at the moment. And he has the technical play style only, which is a shame because if you look at players like Mumba in the second division, they are having more play styles than a player that currently is doing unbelievable things in a Prem. But it's just a matter until a matter of time until he gets those upgrades that he deserves. I fully assume EA will drop a massive winter upgrade on him or should be doing that. But yeah, he comes in. And he is going to be one of the main players in his team. For me, even, I'm going to make him the captain because I truly believe in the abilities of Cole Palmer. He has proven me wrong. When he was at Manchester City, I didn't think he was that special. But Chelsea, wow, you, you brought in the right one. That's for sure. You made the right decision. And I also am changing my opinion about this guy every time I see him play. Now, this next one had to happen. I was watching him when he was on the bench for PSV Eindhoven and got the starting time in the end. It is Jared Branthwaite, who was loaned out from Everton to PSV. At the beginning, I saw him play when he came on as like a substitute. And I thought, wow, this kid could be special. And he earned a starting spot in that team. And now, if I'm not mistaken, he's even starting for Everton uh, in the Premier League. A big talent, left footer as well, or at least he's very two-footed. Because from what I've seen at PSV, he was able to play passes on both of his feet. 22.8 million, one of the most expensive players we have brought in right now. And he's coming in for Sanderson. And now we're slowly building up a decent backup roster as well, which is going to be very important. And he comes in with a 78 rating. He is left-footed, five-star weak foot, exactly as I remember. 77 pace, 79 defending, 76 physicality. And he is quite tall. Yes, six foot five. I mean, this guy has a bright future ahead of him, in my opinion. I cannot wait to see what happens with Brand Wade. It's just a shame that he plays for Everton because I guess he will never join a team like Liverpool or switch to the uh, red side of a Mercy side. But hey, I would love him as a backup player for the Liverpool side who are definitely lacking a little bit of depth there. But hey, he's now part of our team, so he needs to focus on Birmingham. Not bad for the first season. 12th position. We have not gone down again. Leicester City, Bournemouth and Leeds United are going down. Leicester and Leeds teams uh, formerly have gone up before us into the Premier League or maybe one of them came up alongside us but 54 points in a first season that is a hugely successful year for us so I cannot complain about anything there we have an injury to Hall it seems that's not nice he is stuck on the 78 for now we have Raksaki up to an 82 Stansfield up to an 83 Mengi 84 Laird 83 Buchanan 82 and Patterson on an 84 while others like Branthwaite have hopefully gone up as well. Lovely to see how this team is developing. Palmer up to a 79. I actually forgot to change his position uh, for the first half of the season. So he might have not played too many games. But later on, 35 games played. 8 and 3. Not too bad. 23 and 3 from Stansfield. And then we have Raksaki with 12 and 10 in his first Premier League season for us. I like that. Mumba, 9 and 11. Great job, lads. Very satisfied with how things have gone. And I'm very much looking forward to the changes that we can make in the upcoming season. But as far as I remember, in the second Premier League year, you do not get that much money. But if we could make it into the top eight next year, that would be huge. When we're talking about English players that are doing well right now, this one has to be on the list. Curtis Jones. Yes, the lad from Liverpool is joining us now. I absolutely love what he's doing for Liverpool as we speak. He is rocking that midfield whenever he plays. Yes, he does have the odd game where he doesn't do too well, but he gives it his all every time he plays. I want this man to be the center part of our team, the number eight of this squad, the Stevie G of Birmingham City. Curtis Jones, welcome. 45 million. My entire budget 
has been spent on this transfer. Bakunya, I love you. I appreciate you. But it is time for a step up. And Curtis Jones is exactly the player I wanted to bring in. Someone that can also defend, right? He's not terrible with it. Six foot one can be quite physical. But someone with silky flair on him. And someone that can get goals and assists as well from that position. I am so happy that I was able to bring him into this squad and give the man a little bit more love because many people don't talk about Curtis Jones. A lot of people talk about Hravenbesh when he has a good game and stuff like that, even though lately he's been terrible. Endo is getting a lot of praise. But for me, Curtis Jones has been just so fun to watch this season, so impactful. And I really hope he can carry on that form and if he can become a mainstay in the this Liverpool side but for now he's gonna become a main player of this Birmingham City team I'm excited about his transfer into this squad and it's been English players only so far and it's probably gonna end that way I was hoping for eighth but I got fifth which means we get Europa League football for Birmingham City. Manchester clubs are at the top, Liverpool in third. And then the London clubs seem to have done really badly right here. But that's okay. Birmingham on the rise. And at some point, we want to be top of the Premier League. Rooney, watch out. We are doing great over here. We have Curtis Jones on an 85. Stansfield on an 86. Raksaki on an 86 i absolutely love that man's name and then we have bali on an 83 alongside cole palmer who i expected would grow a little bit faster but that's okay hall is currently the lowest rated player in the team but i know for a fact when i played gameplay with him in the starting 11 he was tons of fun so i really hope that is gonna repeat itself right here defensively we are looking very strong by the way one issue i'm having with this specific rebuild is that i'm not getting any good coaches for multiple seasons now i've been stuck with some terrible coaches so hopefully we can fix that as well and definitely we need to bring players onto the bench here multiple players we only have sanderson and bakunya who are a little bit helping with the spine of the team but we definitely need different positions filled out as well which could take this team to the next level in the upcoming year. And that's going to be the focus of the next season. Stansfield, 29-3 in Premier League football. I absolutely love that from him. Vaksaki with 25 goal contributions. Cole Palmer with 9-10 and 10 right there. Uh, Mumba has done really well. I was about to say Bumba. Uh, we have Laird with 5-4 and four from the right back position. Curtis Jones, 4-3. and three. A little bit conservative, but... Then again, he has to do a lot of defensive work for this team, so I'm not really worried about that. I do remember, though, every time that I played with the 4-5-1 formation in gameplay, I did struggle, but there is a little bit of an over overload on the wings with this formation, which I definitely need to use this time around. Defensively, it could struggle, but offensively, offensively we could score a lot of goals. But fifth is an amazing achievement. We're going to Europe. So guess what? The bench has been filled. I have had a budget of 150 million and I've spent it on the lap to come in as a backup striker. Four star weak foot, six foot one, 24 years old. He can support Stan's field in a very good way off the bench. Nelson is a player that can basically play any position on the pitch, in my opinion. So we have brought him in as well. 81 rated. Killing Jr. is a, a very talented player, left-footed, left midfield, 80 rating, love that. The camp position I couldn't supply with more players, sadly, so we're going to have to rely on Roberts for now. Acuna is here, Longello is here, Sanderson is here. That is a much better looking Premier League side bench. And we also have James back from all of his loan deals as well. So guys, this season could be a huge one. I got to be honest. I am expecting a Champions League spot. Guess what? We have two finals. Europa League against Roma and against Manchester City in the FA Cup. So let's just smash it out and see if we can pick up some trophies. I don't even know where our team is when we're looking at the league table. But this tells me it was a good season. The ratings tell me it was a good one. Sadly, Branthwaite is injured. But luckily, we have backups. 3-2 Birmingham City. In extra time, George Hall wins it. 116th minute. What a player. Guys, that is the first 
big trophy, a European one for Birmingham. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a more, possibly against the likes of Manchester City. Is there another trophy to be won? Is that possible? Again, they have a strong squad, a very strong squad, but we have to miss out on Branthwaite. Against City, 2-1. I knew it. Doku, Menj, and Palmer has gotten himself a goal as well. It's Nuno Menj, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, Cole Palmer gets one. I kind of expected us to lose there, I'll be honest with you. Against Roma, I had hope. But is there Champions League football on the horizon? I mean, there should be because we have won the Europa League. Nice. But top four, please. Yes. Fourth. I'll take that. 69 points, 10 points off the top. The city of Manchester still dominating the Premier League, it seems like, with Spurs slipping into third. And the team, as you saw it earlier on, is looking amazing. Stansfield on a 90, the original of the Birmingham City squad that we took over when we came in. Paul on an 85 as well. Raksaki, 91, highest rated player. Let's go, bud. Curtis Jones, 88. Mumba, 87. Yeah, this team is ready for Champions League football. On the bench, a bunch of players who seem to have grown as well, especially Illing Jr. has gone up in his rating. And I cannot wait to take on the clubs in the next season to try and compete for the Champions League trophy. Stansfield, 30 and 4. Raksaki, 21 and 14. Palmer, 21 and 5. Really good stats on many players, but I'm hoping next season, maybe a treble, a double, something big is on the line and I feel it. I can feel it down in my plums. So we already got past the likes of Dortmund and now beating Ajax 7-2 on aggregate. That tells me that this team is ready, but then it's Real Madrid and I think we can get past them with 6-2. What the hell? How did that even happen? 6-2 on aggregate against Real Madrid. First game was 2-2. Second game, we were just like, oh, we had fun in the first one. Let's destroy you now. And that's exactly what happened. Barcelona in the final. So we are basically playing the El Clasico, but in two different games. Barca, let me see your squad before I even check out mine. So Barcelona has Gabriel Jesus, Ferran Torres, Amad Diallo, Bove from Roma, Pedri, Lobotka, okay, Barco, Kimpembe, Inacio, Trilli. I don't know who that is. Testegen is in there. Interesting squad to say the least, but every time I come up against an interesting squad, they smack me up. So I am a bit worried already, but this squad, oh, look at the stats, mate. It is amazing. I cannot wait to see how this team plays. It should be a ton of fun for sure, but defensively, it's going to be a mess. I feel it, so I'm going to just tuck these boys in just so I actually have a little bit more defensive support here and maybe drag Curtis back a little bit more and hope that that actually helps us in the end. Let me just double check who has been the man. Stansfield. No. Mumba. Hey, buddy. Okay, hold on. Mumba is 28 and 6. Saki has 25 and 15. Okay. Cole Palmer with 23 and 9. Stansfield was injured for a little bit. Comes up with 21 and 7. We have four players who scored more than 20 goals. How ridiculous is that, by the way? Absolutely impressive. George Hall with 8 and 11. He has been very steady on his uh in like his stats throughout the seasons. Nothing really insane, but I'm hoping that the gameplay part is where he's gonna be doing really well. Now the Premier League, have we won it? Is there a chance? Yes! Birmingham, absolute domination, 20 point gap. Yes, lads. All right, now we are the best city in England for football. And that's something we wanted to achieve. And we have brought in English players all around to make that happen as well. Even though it was only mainly English players, that was the plan, but hey, we have gone in full in on the English part. And now against Barcelona, it's gonna be a battle. But I am ready for it. I really hope I don't lose because, I don't know, something tells me they're going to play some insane football for absolutely no reason. Am I a little worried going into this game? Yes, I am, because it's been quite a few days since I have played the game itself, especially the gameplay part. And this Barcelona team, as I said, it looks odd. And the odd teams are the ones that beat me, not the strong-looking ones. And straight away, Ferran Torres and Barca 
could make something happen here. And they won't, thanks to our amazing goalkeeper. Barca trying to create space for themselves inside the box now. I needed that tackle to come through. Whew. Barca again, immediately on the attack. And here goes Hall, a player that I absolutely loved last time I used him into Stansfield. Stansfield, can you shoot from there? Make something happen. Oh my God, yes, he can. The angle doesn't matter for the main striker of Birmingham City. The man that has the most goals for them this season in the championship does it now on the biggest stage of them all. A beautiful moment up against Barcelona. A moment you can only dream of. I need that. Thank you. What? Gives a foul for what? Absolutely nothing happened there. Ferran Torres shoots and doesn't score because our keeper once again is a monster. Defensively, we are once again quite open. Lovely play by Barca. Someone needs to step in. Oh, wow. That tackle was essential. We could have easily conceded there. Here goes Hall. Stops. Plays the ball into Stansfield. Beautifully done. Stansfield. Back into Hall. He passes it back on a back heel. Raksaki. Oh, look at that. Pass one. Tries to get past two. He does so. Raksaki on his left foot. It lands in front of Stansfield. Hey, he can not only run past people by himself and score. He can also be the man in the box. Yes, lad. 2-0 against Barca. I was scared going into this, but now I feel a lot more confident about this Champions League trophy. Lovely. Mate, the defense is super solid. I love it. Stansfield making a substantial run. Oh my lord, what a pass from George Hall. Stansfield nearly did it again. Hall, oh, beautifully done. Into Raksaki. He gets past one, smacks it. Unlucky. Cole Palmer. Not much of an effect on this game yet. Apart from that beautiful cross. That ends up with an acrobatic finish. Cole Palmer assist. And our left back, Buchanan, goes in with a sideways bicycle kick. I don't know, like a flying volley. I don't know what you want to call it. It was Ibrahimovic-esque. And that's all I need to tell you. Let's see the replay. Cole Palmer, step over, cuts in, cross whipped towards the far side. Two players just watching as our man rises up into the air and finishes it with class. I just realized, wasn't Jude Bellingham from Birmingham City? And I probably should have, oh wow. I probably should have bought him if he was from Birmingham City. Uh, a little apology uh, right here that I didn't buy Jude, but I feel like I created an amazing team. And I don't think at any point I would have been able to afford him. Maybe in the last season where I had like 150 million to spend. But even then, it could have, could have been kind of tough to get him into the club. Oh no! What am I doing? Bro, I let them back into the game. It's 3-2. I'm just chilling out here. Not paying too much attention to the defense, it seems. Big mistake was made there. I can't believe I just ruined it like that. Okay, we gotta go again. I don't like this one goal advantage only. Oh, yes, Cole Palmer. Go on then, son. Doesn't have much pace, but he does have ability to cut in and finish and make the goalkeeper look extremely silly. I don't know what he's doing. I believe it's Ted Stegen. Cole Palmer with possibly one of the worst haircuts in the game, but at least it's his own. And he gets the goal as the captain. When you need someone to step up, it is the captain. And yeah, Testegan, you gotta work on that, pal. Oh no. Oh! Also makes it 4 3 in the 90th minute. I mean, they're putting up a fight, surely, but I, I just wanted to say, I actually did look it up again just to confirm. Yes, Jude was a Birmingham player, and I believe they actually retired his number. I can't believe I missed out on the opportunity to bring in Job and Jude into the same team and play them alongside each other, but maybe on a different day, it's fine. Maybe that's something that everyone that makes content would have done to go ahead and get those players in. So I guess I'll just tell myself we did it differently. 
4-3 Champions League belongs to Birmingham City. So Cole Palmer, it ain't Jude, but it's you. An Englishman to lift the trophy in the end. Second biggest city in England now has the biggest club in world football. That was what we wanted to achieve. I want to thank you all for going ahead and watching today's video. I appreciate you so much. And now expect a bunch of content to be put out, including live streams. I'll see you next time. Take care and peace.